You're listening to The Radcast, a top 25 worldwide business podcast. If it's radical, we cover it. Here's your host, Ryan Alford. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the latest edition of The Radcast. I'm Ryan Alford, your host. We say if it's radical, we cover it. We've got a radical story today, my friends. Got a lot of good storytelling transition. We're talking with former Major League Baseball player. Let's call him a baseball badass. I mean, he, he played his whole life. We're just going to call him, you know, I like the hyperbole here, Matt. Matt Caesar, former <laughs> world champion. Not, not even a former. He is a world champion with the Chicago Cubs, former Major League Baseball, and a hell of a fucking artist, if you say so myself. I got looking. <laughs> I went down the rabbit hole. I'm like, damn, this is some brilliant shit. So, Matt, man, it's a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for having me on, man. Really appreciate you. You're bringing me out here. Yeah, man. In Jersey. That's my Jersey, best Jersey. Jersey. That's as good as I get. I can't, it gets bad from there. Just Jersey, I guess. Is, you know, I, I got my <laughs> yeah, Southern I accent. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't have much of an accent. I'm from, uh, from the South, South part of Jersey. So I don't really, uh, I don't have that thick New York accent. Yeah. They, they call it what the, uh, Long Island lockjaw. That's, like, that's, yeah. what, that's what my, uh, my ex client when I was in New York used to always say. We, we got that Long Island lockjaw. I'm like, okay, <laughs> whatever that means. Yeah, I've, I have more of that like uh, Philly water accent. You, yeah. You go, to, you go anywhere in uh, in the country and you ask for, you know, a glass of water and they look at you like, we don't have that. <laughs> water. Yeah. yeah well, what's now, what's we're the just water? the y'all crowd down here in South Carolina. Yeah. Y'all, you guys, you know, I'm trying to mix into you guys, but it doesn't feel as natural as y'all. <laughs> what y'all doing? Oh man, Matt, it's good to have you on the show. I've been following you and got to, you know, obviously doing some research with my team and seeing everything that you've done with bone marrow and all that. And I know we'll get into all that, but let's tee it up, man. Pro athlete from I mean, right out of the womb, I guess. I don't know, man. You, <laughs> baseball, football, Villanova, yeah. right? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, yeah. let's, let's, let's tell everybody, we'll give everybody a little bit of your background. All right. Yeah. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm from, from South Jersey, um, born and raised here, ended up coming back after, uh, retired. Um, you know, a little bit of background, you see all these professional athletes always advocating for, you know, when they have kids, you know, Chipper Jones just came out with something about, you know, I'm going to let my kid play whatever he wants. And, um, dude, that's what my parents did for me. I was in hockey, wrestling, basketball, football, soccer, and then, just kind of gradually went to football and baseball. And then in high school, I went to, uh, to track. So it was just kind of like an all around thing. And then whatever I was best at, I went for it. And, um, yeah, I, I went to Villanova, uh, full scholarship for football and played baseball there as well. So it was two sport athlete, um, got drafted in the fifth round, um, kind of, kind of a wild story. I was able to, you know, put myself up there pretty high on the radar as a football player, um, so I had the potential to get drafted in the, the third or fourth round. So, you know, that was like my main focus, man. I was like, you know, full bore on going to play football in the pros in the NFL. What position? Went to, I played wide receiver slot. So I was like the inside guy, the shifty, shifty little, little wide receiver, Julian Edelman. Uh, at the time it was Wes Welker. I feel like me and, uh, Edelman are kind of the same age. Um, so yeah, dude, I went to, uh, a, a, uh, like a combine uh, training facility, uh, had planned on to go to the combine and the senior bowl. Um, and then Jim Hendry, who was the GM of the Cubs, uh, flew out to me and they offered me a new deal. So, um, I paid I you not for, to play football. Baseball. All right. Yeah. yeah, how that yeah goes? They, they pretty much, <laughs> you know, I got lucky though, man, my junior year when I got drafted, I actually went to play baseball, uh, short sleeves in Boise, um, played for, I think it was like 30 days, you know, batted 400 dominated pretty, pretty solid. And then I came back to senior year for my for uh, my senior season football, and you know had a, had a pretty solid season, and just set myself up for uh, for that bargain, you know. <laughs> I love it, Hunter. I'll call you the Hunter Renfro of the slot. Yeah. That that's my yeah, boy. That, I went to Clemson. Clemson. Oh, okay. That's the that's the modern day slot guy. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, that, <laughs> he was true. a one star out of college. Dabo mm -hmm. Sweeney picked him out of nowhere, and uh, he turned into he turned into a pretty good pro for the Raiders. Actually, Heck so, yeah, uh, yeah, he yeah. Did. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, that's a little. Bit I love of my it. Story. So yeah, so that's college nice. athlete played two sports, good at both. End up in baseball. You know, it's funny how things work, right? You know, and I know you had the minor league career and then you get with the Cubs and like you've got these guys that play what, like 30 years and never win a title. 
I mean, yeah. and you're a world yeah. champion. <laughs> like, no, I, yeah, isn't that awesome? Thing, Amazing. Yeah, that's one thing <laughs> that people really can't take away from me, man. I was, uh, was a part of that, that 2016 special team. And, you know, you, you said you follow me on Instagram and socials, man. I, I do a lot of posting about it because it was just a special thing. You know, I was, was able to, uh, you know, win an FCS division one, double a national championship with, with Nova. And it was, you know, like it, it's on a different level, but it's the same, same type of camaraderie in those, uh, in those clubhouses or that locker room, just everybody pulling for everybody. Nobody, you know, being like a single eye guy, you know, friends and family off the court or off the, the field. Um, so it was, it was a tight knit group. And I mean, man, it was a lot of fun. I, you know, I can't say that enough. Did you miss football? Uh, yeah, I did. It's, it's just a different, it's a different animal, man. It's like, um, you know, it's, it's blood, sweat and tears and you, you're really going to war with the, those guys on the field. So that's, I think that's what I missed the most, but I, I learned to adapt and kind of have that same feeling um, in baseball as well. It's just, it's just a different kind of feeling, you know, what's, you know, it's always hard. Like I talk to a lot of athletes and i talk to you and I've got friends that play pro and like all, but it's always <clears throat> hard. I think, you know, you've got fans and those of us out here, I, I, I had the talent, but busted an ankle my senior year. So they said sayonara to all of it, but, but didn't play. So the, the us is out here, it's always hard to describe. You played at the highest level in baseball. You you were on the path for football. That experience, that camaraderie slash the toughness of football, and then baseball's different. But it's always hard, I think, for people that didn't play to understand, I don't know, the culture, the inside side of those things. I mean, like... Do your best to describe, you know, maybe, and I know football just, it stopped at Villanova and you didn't play pro, but like you were at the highest level though. I mean, I mean, you know, you were going to get drafted. So do your best to describe to me, like what that feels like playing at that high level, the buzz of, of, of that feeling. Yeah. I mean, dude, like, you know, and that's what I, what I told you off camera was what I'm kind of searching for. Um, it's, it's, you can't replicate that feeling. Um, but like the, the buzz of the feeling you, you can ask a lot of professionals and I feel like they would have probably something similar. I mean, dude, especially for baseball, you like, I went through five leagues before I got to the big leagues, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's Arizona fall league. It's short season. It's, it's low a it's high a, double a triple a so that's that's six leagues before you get to the big leagues the only thing that's different you know yeah you're playing better players but is the atmosphere and you know when you when you get out there when you stand on that field for the first couple times you're like wow holy shit man this is this is it (laughs) and then it's it's a game and you're competing you're trying to win and and there's a bigger picture so that yeah you're always going to hear people yelling at you screaming at you but you know it's it's uh it's in one ear out out the other for me. And that's, that's how I always kind of looked at it. And, you know, I, I think you'll get the same answer from a lot of professionals that, yeah, when you get there, it's like, wow, I, I made it, but it's, it's time for business. Now we want to win, you know, it is business. That's the thing. Like no for fans, it's craziness. That's fandom, right? You know, they're mm-hmm. crazy about it. My team, the Cubbies, you know, Sitting yeah. out, you know, like I'd, I'd spent work to summer and plus some out in, in Chicago. And so I know that that crowd. Uh, it's yep. crazy. And it's great, though. I mean, the culture and everything like that. But it's, you know, it's fandom. But at the end of the day, it is a business and you've got to perform, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. the pressure to perform. And I'm especially going going through the different leagues. I'm sure that did, did, was it overwhelming like or did you feel like you kept it in check? Uh, I don't, I don't think it was too overwhelming. Um, you know, and I, I just, I had that background, like, man, I, I, I played at Nova. So not, not saying that we had a ton of people there, but I mean, we, we played at West Virginia when there was 80,000 people, like they were number two, two seed in the country. <laughs> um, you know, we played a, a temple and we, we packed the link, you know, I'm not, not saying that, you know, it was overwhelming, but I, I feel like I, I was able to build that base to almost work my way into it and prepare for something like that by not even knowing I was doing it. So, you know, it was, I, I could see it be overwhelming for some people if they get pushed up too fast. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, man, everybody's going to adapt. And these, these guys are professional athletes. Like you see these young guys get up there and they might struggle for a couple couple weeks or maybe maybe a month or so. 
but but they adapt man it's it's uh it's it's super impressive to watch and it was it was cool to be a part of are you a fan of the game still like you know do you uh watch a lot of, of football what, what are you are you a fan of of pro sports so you know growing up i was i was never a fan just because i played it so much man i had no 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 time to really watch anything and that that was on me man i just i uh i was at the field nonstop, man like i was just talking to my wife about it like you know you look at everything and and i i've earned everything you know i was growing up and i wasn't the fastest I wasn't the strongest. I'm, I'm like a little five eleven white guy that's just running around trying to catch a football, you know? So like I, I earned everything I did because I work so, so freaking hard, you know? And it's, it's, um, you know, that's just, uh, that's just how, how it was, you know, you, you earn everything you get and that's in life. That's how it is though. It's in everything, you know, yeah, everybody yeah. wants to hand it to them, you know, it's, but it's, it's either, uh, it will be and, fleeting and like, or it won't mean as much. <laughs> well, yeah. And that's, and at the end of the day, man, I, like, you know, you could win the lottery, but if you, if you earn your, yourself a hundred million dollars, like you, you've been through that. So, you know, you, you appreciate it so much more where if it's just handed to you, you're just like, Oh, okay. Well now I'm still searching for some kind of feeling, you know? And that's, that's just life, man. You, you gotta earn it. So I believe it was 2010, you know, around there, you'll correct me with dates, but it, the bone marrow, the, how, how did, how did that all come about? So like, that was the most impressive part of your story. And, and even today now, I, I, you know, I want to do justice to us and I want you to kind of tell that story, how that came about the impact it's had all of those things. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'll, it's a, it's a little bit of a story. So that's okay. Um, We're about stories here. Up. Go for it. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me try <laughs> and give you like a nice short, simple version. So when I, when I got to college in 2007, Villanova, um, the head coach was Andy Talley and he runs a foundation. It's called get in the game. And he's, he's actually super brilliant for doing this. So he was with be the match who, you know, is, is, does the bone marrow donations and uh, like handles everything. And he's like, you know, let me, let me put this in football and get, you know, every, every team, every college team's got a, you know, from 50 to a hundred healthy, healthy guys. And he's like, let's get them all to, you know, do cheek swabs and, you know, tests and have the potential to save someone's life who needs some bone marrow. So in 2007, like, you know, he would have these, uh, these kind of rallies where, you know, as freshmen, we would just kind of round up as many people as we could. Um, and then at the end of it, we would test and it was simple and it's still simple. Um, it's actually easier now than it was back then. It's like a simple cheek swab. You have these long, um, Q-tip looking things. You, you put them in every corner of your mouth and you literally just put them back in and they send them away. Is it essentially so DNA? Like, I mean, is that, yeah, yeah, that's, that's essentially it. They get your saliva and then they just by the saliva, they can see if, you know, you're a potential match. Um, so yeah, I did it in 2007 and I got called to donate in 2009 and, uh, you know, it was right before we went to the playoffs for football and I was, you know, a, a pretty solid part of that, um, football squad. So I went into my coach and I said, Hey, you know, I just was called to donate and I'm going to donate. And he just kind of looked at me and put his head down. He was like, Matt, I, I know you would do that. So, um, he's like, well, you have all the support from us. Hmm. So I did the, I did the blood. So after they do the saliva, they take your blood, they see if you're a potential match. So it got down to five people and I was one of those five people. And then, you know, a week later they called me and they were like, Hey, you're the match. You are the perfect match for this little girl. Um, we were going to your donation was, you know, I think at the time it was like November 21st or, or whatever it was. I said, okay, you know, I'll be ready. They called me back like two or three days later and the little girl was too weak to accept the bone marrow. So mm. she, so I couldn't do it and I, they just pushed it off and we ended up winning the national championship game and I was the MVP of the game. So, so that's like that part of the story. So later in the year, uh, it was my junior year. So it was like, you know, as you know, if you're any, if you're in a sports at all, like that's your, your, your biggest year for, you know, NFL, baseball, all, all that kind of stuff. So I was, I was doing really well baseball wise. Um, and I got called to donate again at the end of the year. It was like, you know, our last, uh, like the last 12 days or no, it's like the last you know month of, of baseball called to donate, told my coach, I said, Hey, I got called again. I'm going to donate. So I ended up donating 
they give you this drug called Nupagen, which it increases your white blood cells mm-hmm. and um, it enlarges your spleen. So they, they treat it kind of like mono. You know, you're not allowed to, to do anything for, I think it was like three to four weeks. So right before I, I started taking this medicine, I, like I remember like it was yesterday, I was at um, Canada River Shark Stadium. We were playing St. Joe's. My last at bat, I hit a home run opposite field. And I like usually never do that. So went to donate. I'm out for three to four weeks. We have one one more series, and it's the West Virginia series. We go down to West Virginia, and they were in contention to make the playoffs. And if we beat them, we we knock them out. So my first at bat back, I hit a home run too. Mm. So it was like a sandwich home run, and like I didn't really hit any home runs that year. And it was just like, wow, man, this is uh, this is pretty special for this to happen. So long story short, I ended up donating the bone marrow. The girl was from the Ukraine. Um, she was 18 months old. And now she's 14. So everything worked out and I stay in touch. And um, yeah, it's, that's the short and simple story. I mean, that one transplant, is that all she, she needed to get to worship? That, like, is it that that's cu- yep, curing that, that's, or whatever you call it? I mean, yeah, that's, that's all she needed, man. It was, uh, you know, it was she, so what, what she could have, there's two, there's two procedures. There's one that's through the hip, which is like a little bit more painful, but now, now they put you to sleep and you're just sore for a couple of days. And then the one that I did was, uh, you know, they, they put a needle in one arm, they extract your blood, they filter it through a machine to get the white blood cells out. And then they put a need, they have a needle in the other arm where it puts the blood back into it. And that, that's like, you know, it's anywhere from like three to six hour procedure. So at the time, like, you know, she, she could only accept the stem cell, which is the one I did. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's like, you know, you said you watch the story. So like you said, she's in Ukraine. They're, they're not, the family's not only fighting for her life and trying to find a way to like keep her daughter, keep their daughter alive, but they're, they're fighting these wars as well. You know, so it's it's uh, it's just a wild story, man. They they moved from place to place as refugees. They went to Israel, Canada, back to Ukraine, back to Israel, and now they're in Canada. So it's like just a wild story in itself. They're in Canada now. Yeah, they uh, they're able to get over. They went to uh, they went to Israel right when the war started, when everybody was kind of leaving, and um, they had they were they were there for like three months and they were just waiting for I guess papers to to go transfer to Canada and, and start a new life there. It's crazy how much we take for granted, <laughs> you know. It's like just we live daily yeah, lives man. and we think we got yep. problems and we don't have bombs being dropped on our head, you know. <laughs> like, Dude, you couldn't be more right, man. I mean, and then you know the awareness you've brought. I mean, I know that obviously stuck with you, and as you've kind of come in out of baseball, you uh, we talked pre episode. Damn artist. I mean, you know, yeah. like, I mean, look, it, Matt, you can't have all the damn talent, no. dude. MVP of the championship football team, good looking guy, uh, baseball player, Chicago Cubs World Series ring. Did you have the ring on? Did you put the ring on, I, Matt? Like, no, I, I, you know what? I like literally was, was in my safe and I literally looked right at it and I was like, I can't do that, man. I oh, I was, that. I was, I yeah, was, but know, uh, I'm sorry. maybe round two. Uh, but okay, uh, for sure, I got you. But man, and you're an artist. I mean, come on, man. You can't have it all. I mean, <laughs> can you share some? <laughs> so, yeah. So that's uh, like I said, like we were talking about before how, you know, kind of how I got started. And, you know, like I give so much credit to my parents because they kind of just let me do whatever I wanted. Um, you know, what it, it wasn't, nothing was forced on me, no sports, no, not art, not school. You know, it was the only thing that was forced is that I couldn't quit. You know, you can't quit. You have to stick it out. And, and that's, that's how I was. I feel like that's how I was raised and that's what has gotten me so far just to kind of push through stuff, even if it didn't work or I didn't like it, you know? So, you know, like I said before, it was, my dad was, uh, was very creative. He was always a huge fisherman, um, created bucktail, sold them online. He was like a little hustler, entrepreneur, um, did construction, uh, carved fish. Like, I mean, he did it all. So I was always kind of like at his side, um, at night, that was like one of his ways to kind of calm down after work. You know, I, you know, I literally it's probably the same for every dad, you know, they come home, they sit on their couch Yeah, you know, mom makes dinner, he eats dinner, goes, goes back and sits on his couch and watches TV and does his hobby. So I was always kind of like right there next to him. And, uh, I, I took that, you know, I did it in grade school, did art in grade school, high school, um, college and, it was uh, it was a way for me 
like we mentioned, like there's, there's so much stress in baseball and there's, there's high energy. So there's gotta be a way to kind of come down after that game. Cause you're, you're just, you're on for three hours, three and a half hours, not to mention you're at the field for four or five hours before. So a way for me to wind down was always to have my art pad and draw. And then, you know, later down the line was, it was an iPad and, you know, I had an Apple pencil and I was able to do a little bit more with digital and when 2020 hit, I was like, not that I was scrambling, but, you know, I was always a hustler and, you know, everybody would see me post this art and they were like, Hey, you know, we want some of that. Like, <laughs> you know, why don't you share? So I just tried to do, you know, what was relative to the, to the times we were living in. And I, I mean, I'm sure you watched the last dance. Oh, yeah. And that was like, dude, everybody was watching the last dance. So I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm Chicago Cub, Cub yeah, World Series Bulls, champion. Oh, yeah. I grew up with Jordan Bulls. guy. Yeah. Dude, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, I painted Michael Jordan and I freaking crushed it. And I learned how to hustle. I learned how to sell prints online and have, you know, and sleep and make money because I had that third party. They would go, they would buy the prints. And, and that and that was that, dude. So, you know, and I, and I took a lot. I took love to that love to make an art and being able to have like this therapy away from from this madness of the world was happening covid was going on nobody could leave like you know so so for me to kind of like get away it was getting away from baseball it was getting away from the madness in the world and i was able to just kind of put that on uh on canvas and and kind of like not pave my way for my future but i mean it almost helped me retire because i was able to transition into one thing right after i retired that's that's helpful. Uh, a lot of athletes don't have that, you know, and I've talked to a lot of them. They the highest of highs, you know, maybe had a longer career in whatever. And they're trying to replace that, not just their energy and time, but like it's just hard to have a career because they consider a business, a business mm-hmm. where you have that level of accolade and that level of awareness and the crowds and the fans and all that stuff. And even if you're not like self-absorbed about it, trying to replace that is tough. Yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I think it's irreplaceable, man. And that's, you know, what I said earlier is I'm, I'm still searching for that. I'm searching for the team. I'm searching for, you know, that atmosphere. And I, and I know that I, I'll probably never get it, but you know, I'm going to work for it. And, you know, if I could find a way to do it through art or, you know, something else through social media, you know, and, and almost you, you miss making a difference too, man. You, you can motivate and inspire so many more people when you're on TV, you know, they see you on TV and you say one word and, and you inspire so many kids or, uh, you know, around the country. And that, and that's, that's tough to leave too. You know, you, you see all the impact you make in, in some people's life when you're playing baseball. And I think that's kind of what I'm searching for too, because I was able to share my story much easier while I was playing than while I'm not. Yeah, man. But, but you're able, that's what, and you're seeing this, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but like the power of social media and I mean, just us sitting here talking, you know, like the, the reach that you have and the influence that you can have with your art, you know, can and will, you know, go to places that you may not even know. And so it's powerful. Like what's, I know you've transitioned and you mentioned the NFT thing, the digital side of stuff. I mean, that's right. My, I own an ad agency. So that's right in our wheelhouse with marketing and things like that. I, I mean, what's that been like? What's that process been? Yeah. So that's like, I mean, like I said, man, in 2020, I was, not that I was searching because, you know, we were smart with money. You know, we didn't, we didn't blow it. I was never, you know, one of those guys that just went and bought everything. Um, but I want to be successful, you know, so if I can't make the money that I wanted to, you know, I could have made a hundred million dollars in baseball. And then as soon as I would be done, I would want to want to find something else. Yeah. So that, that was just like how I was like, you know, bred. So in 2020, we just had my, my son, my son was like, you know, a, a couple months old. And, you know, I had so much time to just figure things out. So I would literally, I would paint all day and it was like the last dance. I, yeah, I crushed it with doing like in real life paintings. And I was just kind of like searching for things online because I know people were crushing it online. And I ran into a, a, a friend who was never a teammate, but was a, a baseball player that came up with me. Uh, his name was Micah Johnson. His name is Michael Johnson. And he's like, yo, see, let's do it. It's like, you know, when the George Floyd thing happened, 
And he's like, you know, let's do an NFT of the, of the George Floyd. And I was like, you know, what's an NFT? I had no idea what it was. And he was like, it will be great. You know, uh, uh, a white and a black baseball player come together to make this painting and sell it as an NFT. So I said, okay, let's do it. So I, I put all my trust in him because, you know, like I said, he's a fellow baseball player. I knew he had a great background and we did this thing and it sold out in like eight minutes. We made like 60 grand. And I was like, Mike, what the, what, what just happened? Yeah. He's like, he's like, well, welcome to the new world. So I'm like, okay. And I literally dude, like I grinded for, you know, days on days on end. I had no idea what Ethereum was or Bitcoin was, but I figured out how to sell this digital art, put it on the blockchain, create these NFTs. And I really well doing it. And, you know, we go back to the team thing. Like I had this individual success, but I was still searching for more. Like it didn't matter how much money I was making. I'm like, well, I need, I need, I don't need more money, but I, I need more. Like I need, I was passionate about it, but it just didn't feel the same. So then now I, I uh, I'm one of the founders of a company called uh, the noble gallery. And what we do is we bring on artists and we have a community and the artists will, will make a painting for us. And we essentially sell our, sell their art. We take a percentage and we pretty much guarantee their sellout. So they know that they're going to sell out with us. We make the money for putting them on our platform and they get their money. You know, we, we really take care of the artists and that's one of the reasons why I feel like they, everybody wants to drop with us. Um, and it's is been that, good. Is you know, that it's NFT a, bubble burst though? Like it was all the rage two years ago. And I, right. I know that digital art has longitude, latitude. Lo I mean, it's got a long life. I mean, because obviously that's kind of where it belongs, but mm -hmm. Is that, uh, is it, talk to me about the NFT world, you know, two years yeah. ago versus now. Well, I, I mean, I, I think, did the bubble burst? I don't know if you can say the bubble bursted. Uh, maybe the Leveled PFP out. route. <laughs> yeah, maybe the PFP route did, like all like the um, the board apes. Uh, the punks are going to be around forever just because of the fact that they were the first. Yep. And that was like, you know, the originals. Um, but I, I think, you know, as far as PFPs, they, they could be over because it was just like, I mean, dude, it was free money. Like you could buy a PFP for 0 0.08, which was like a hundred bucks. And then, and two days later you could sell it for, you know, $5,000. It was incredible. Crazy. And I think it was just like the new thing. So people were just doing it and they felt the FOMO yeah. and they wanted to buy it for whatever the price was, you know, but I, I think the art wise digital art that's just another medium. Like people paint on canvas, they spray paint, they, um, you know, paint with acrylics, they paint with watercolors. I think this is just another form of, you know, of medium for, for artists. And, you know, the artists that have, have stuck it out, like they still do well, like they still sell, sell at high prices. And, you know, so I don't think the art bubble has burst, but I think the PFP NFT bubble has probably, yeah. uh, is, uh, are you 100% <laughs> digital now? All your art? No, dude, I, I do everything, man. I, I still, I just, I signed a deal with Fanatics to uh, like, you know, do some of the paintings with them. Um, yeah, dude, like I said, I, I'm a hustler, man. So I, I enjoy doing all this stuff. I enjoy spending time with my family. I love golfing, but I, I definitely find ways to work. <laughs> <laughs> What's your handicap at golf? Uh, I'm, I'm like eight, eight, okay. nine. All right. I'm anywhere from go. like high seventies to low eighties. There you go. Um, That's where I am. The, I, yeah, so I thought you were going to say like plus five or something. I'd be like, dude, nah, yeah. nah, nah, nah. <laughs> no, I'm not that good. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you never know. Those baseball players, sometimes it's either a struggle or it's like unreal. Yeah. Like uh, you hit it a long way. I hit it pretty far. Yeah. I struggled early on with, on with the slice, but I, you know, it's, I mean, you know how it is, man. If you, if you put any work into anything, like you can be good. I hate yeah. the guys that get pissed off when they stink and they only play once a month. Like, come on, man. Like if you're working your job and you only did it once a month, would you be any good? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> what's, no, a man, uh, what's a bad day for bat Caesar? Like, oh, like bad day. Uh, I'm not hearing many bad habits. So like, you know, like you seem to have it put together. Like, well, what's a yeah, bad day for I mean, you? My bad days, you know, my, both my parents have cancer. So that's, oh. those are bad days for me. Um, yeah. you know, my mom had a couple strokes last summer, you know, my dad called me, you know, I'm up early, man. I like, you know, four thirty five. I'm up grinding, working out. And, you know, my dad knows I'm awake and he just had reached out. He called me. He's like, Hey, you know, mom's kind of unresponsive. So, you know, she had a couple strokes, had some, you know, some brain surgery. So, mm. so those are bad days. Those are bad days. But, you know, like you said, 
we wake up and we're grateful to open our eyes and be in this country and have the freedom to do what we, we want to do. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful every day, man. I, I get to see my mom and my dad, you know, all the time. They're right down the street from me. And part of the reason why I think it was meant to be for me to retire was because I'm here, because I'm spending, you know, these, these, these moments with my family, they're watching me, they're helping me raise my kid, you know? So it's, it's, it's a blessing in disguise, I think. So I talk to guys like you and I think people listen and I think you've touched on a few of them, but I always like to, to at least attempt to like uncover it. Like, what's the play plan? You've been successful in everything you've done. You've worked hard. You've earned it all yourself. But like when you talk to other people, and I'm sure you do just by the nature, you're freaking Cubs world champion, you're ex, you know, world, I mean, a championship football player, amazing artist. I'm sure you get asked, you know, all these things. Well, well how'd you, how'd you do it? How'd you get successful? But like, what, what are maybe some of those like really tactical things that have been like in the Matt Caesar playbook of success? Uh, I mean, I, I think any success is consistency is key, man. Like, you know, even it's funny because people think like, you know, these YouTubers, these creators, they just became, you know, popular overnight. Like these dudes are grinding, you know, like when I was doing paintings, like I was grinding, doing paintings and, and, like just posting it just to try and like get some interaction. You know, I got, I got lucky, you know, I, I did a few paintings and, you know, we, my wife and I, we started a foundation and we, you know, we raised money for the people around here who have cancer. We, you know, donate food, donate presents. And for one of the, we, one of our events, I did, you know, paintings of myself, at, you know, and portraits with, you know, football and baseball. And they both sold for 500 bucks. And I continued to work and continued to, to paint, you know, icons and celebrities and we won the World Series that year and the Cubs reached out and they were like, hey, you know, what about you doing um, the Cubs World Series painting for our Bricks and Ivy Ball? And, you know, maybe I had a little head start, but they would have never asked me if I wasn't putting in that time, like doing cool artwork. Yeah. So they so they sold that for 40 grand. And then my 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 art career kind of like skyrocketed. But I put in the time to do it, man. I've been doing it my whole life, you know, and that's the same thing. Like I said, you know. Dude, I've been grinding at 4.30, 5 o'clock pretty much my whole life. And I did that because, you know, I did that at Villanova. Like, our workouts were 5.30, 6 a.m. in the morning, and I got better. Like, that discipline that helped, you know, we didn't have to work out that early. But but the discipline, like, helped me get better. And same thing right now. Like, dude, I'm not I'm a retired athlete. Like, don't need to be working out at 5 o'clock in the morning. But my ass is on the beach Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5 o'clock in the morning putting myself through suffering pain because I need to. You know, success follows winners, man. You're a winner, dude. I mean, <laughs> I, Thanks, I, it isn't accidental. You know, people yeah. like to, to think that, oh, man, he fell into that. He was so blessed to be naturally born as an athlete. <laughs> yeah, the bullshit. Nah, you know, dude, like, like I said, we were having that conversation. <laughs> I was having that conversation with my wife today, like, you know, because I was just uh, an average kid. And grade school, kids were faster than me. Kids were doing more pull-ups than me. I just wanted it more than everybody else. <laughs> well, your parents did a good job, brother. <laughs> Where can everybody keep up with everything you got going on? I know you still involved with the bone marrow stuff. Let's talk about some of the hit lists where, where everybody can kind of stay following you, learn more about, you know, the things that we can only go so far on. Yeah. I mean, dude, all, all my stuff's on my, my Instagram social and, you know, super C's four, um, and my art website is mattcesarart.com. You know, I know that last name is a little bit difficult to spell. So uh, <laughs> spell it out for everybody. We'll have it on the They'll see it in the show notes in the list, but spell it for everybody. <laughs> Dude, it's S Z C Z U R. And the, listen to this. The funny part is, like, when I go, go to places and they're like, all right, can you give me your last name, please? I literally spell out the last name for these people. And they can't even write it down right. Like, yeah, it's, it's, they look the, at it's like, a weird combination of letters. You don't write it long. <laughs> yeah. but what's funny is when you said the letters, it sounded more like the name than the name of looking at the name. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> no, that's, that's, yeah, that's funny. But yeah, dude, that's that's me, man. I'm, I'm You can find me on socials at the Super C's 4. And then, you know, my website has everything as well. Really appreciate it, Matt. I, I want to stay in touch. I'm going to text you my number. Um, okay, cool. I'd love to uh, 
just continue relationship. I love talking with people that are driven like you. And uh, I know that our audience, we get a lot of value from it, brother. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. It's, it's always great where I can come share the story and raise awareness. Yeah, man. Hey guys, you know, to find us the radcast.com search for Matt Caesar <laughs> or just search for <laughs> hell, just search for badass artists. You'll find all the highlight clips from today. <laughs> World champion, Chicago cub, Matt Caesar. You know where I'm at. I Ryan and offered on all the social platforms. You'll see that blue check. I had it before you could buy it. We'll see you next time. <laughs> The Radcast. To listen or watch full episodes, visit us on the web at theradcast.com or follow us on social media at our Instagram account, the.rad.cast or at Ryan Alford. Stay radical. Take a